are the things that are known to, to cause neuroinflammation in a, in a chronic setting? Well, one is traumatic brain injury. So, and you know, there's a lot of TBI out there now. Um, we've got all the, the vets that have it, um, all the pro football players that have it, all the young football players that have it, right? And motor vehicle accidents. You know, if you have su supported clients who've had a TBI from a, a, a motor vehicle accident, you know that it, it's not something that gets, they get over quickly, right? You've got inflammation in the brain. There's only a couple little arteries going up there. You don't have a lot of anti-inflammatory, antioxidant activity up there. So once in this enclosed area, they get the inflammation going on, it's not that easy to turn it around. So TBI is a big factor here causing it. Well, it turns out that endotoxins tweak it really well. What are endotoxins? Those are the um, um, uh, bacterial cell walls, uh, gram-negative bacterial cell walls from the intestines. What triggers the endotoxicity? Standard American diet, high fat diet does that. Um, and I'm gonna re review this later in, in, the, in the conference here, showing you how the microbiome will either stimulate neuroinflammation or will quench it. And that's all really based on diet. So neuroinflammation caused by lipopolysaccharides, endotoxicity. So you've got, you know, your, your, that good old gut-brain connection. Uh, microbes will do it. So infective agents will do it as well. Glycation end products do it. So elevated blood sugar, which is with type two diabetes now being so prevalent and yesterday uh, in the lecture, I covered a lot about uh, type 2 diabetes being di a direct result of our environmental burden. Matter of fact, I now consider the presence of type 2 diabetes to be basically pathognomonic for environmental overload. So you, but any elevation of blood sugar does that. Stress does it, including trauma, PTSD, uh, in, causes neuroinflammation and then a whole host of ubiquitous environmental toxins. So including a whole lot of air pollutants as we're gonna find out. So it's like, hold your breath. So you've got two different ways of really tweaking the, uh, the primary and secondary pathways for tweaking the microglia. And in an acute situation, it's able to get balanced by anti-inflammatory cytokines. But when you get the, the TNF-alpha, inter, um, gamma interferon, interleukin-6, interleukin-10, if you can't quench that, it becomes a chronic issue. So here's basically the acute versus the chronic. Um, is that in the acute, it's, it's, you're able to quell it with anti-inflammatory cytokines, interleukin-4, interleukin-10, um, and alpha interferon. And you have enough glutathione left in your brain to do the antioxidant action. So in your brain, if there's oxidative damage, and this is true anywhere in your body, inflammation is, is the next step after oxidative damage. You get oxidative damage, you get inflammation. What happens in the arteries from the oxidized LDL? The oxidized LDL hits it, oxidation, next step, inflammation. This is what happens throughout the body. It's very, very, this is just, it's, it's the two-step. <laughs> step. it's, it's the two-step that goes on. So in the brain, again, you, 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 you've got a certain amount of glutathione there to protect the mitochondria and all the neurons, etc. When that gets depleted, you can't fight off neuroinflammation. And so then you're gonna have, in the chronic, the inflammatory cytokines prevail, glutathione depletion, and then you get in the TH17, which is the pro-inflammatory cytokine picture. Starts with interleukin-6 and 10, stimulates interleukin-17. You get in this whole astoundingly powerful avalanche of inflammatory cytokines that can't be stopped, then you get the blood-brain barrier 
damage. So when you get uh, interlu uh, TH17 going on here, you get inflammation. This is also present. It's, it's very powerful in autoimmunity. So if you got someone with autoimmune conditions going on, you got a TH17 dominance. Do you think you're gonna have neuroinflammation? Yeah, more likely than not. It's just gonna be there with anybody that's got RA, uh, lupus, MS. Well, MS is one of the neuroinflammatory processes asthma, systemic sclerosis, all these things. And if you've got bowel inflammation, you're gonna have neuroinflammation. It's just gonna be there. It's just gonna be there. And these are areas that, I mean, uh, I've never heard neuroinflammatory protocols for any of this stuff, right? I, I haven't. So what are the toxins that are known to incite uh, a TH17 condition? Well, air pollution, particulate matter and diesel exhaust, very, very common. This is one of the reasons I'll get into it, why uh, women living close to a roadway with diesel, with diesel exhaust have higher rates of having autistic kids from the neuroinflammation. That's why kids who still live in that same house, get their autism gets worse, the neuroinflammation. Cigarette smoke, mercury, powerful neuroinflammatory agent. BPA that we were just talking about. Now there's no evidence to say that the other non-A bisphenols don't do this. My guess is it's the bisphenol part, not the A part <laughs> that really tweaks this. So the other bisphenols, um, trichloroethylene. Well, that's dry cleaning fluid, yeah, but it's a major groundwater contaminant in the United States of America. It's so important that on the uh, the EPA website, they've got a whole United States map so you can check the TC TCE contamination in your area. You should know this. Now, Dr. Patrick, you lived in Tucson a while, one of the great TCE hotspots for groundwater. Scottsdale, another TCE super fun cleanup site, Scottsdale, Arizona, in the water there. This is common. It is very common. Uh, polychlorinated biphenyls, so there you go, farm salmon, which you will not be served here at this conference. You will, in fact, be served vital choice Alaskan salmon, red salmon at this conference. Thank you, vital choices. And then paraquat, okay, okay who, yeah, unless you're using paraquat, forget about it. But all the rest are like the first two uh, air pollution, guess what you're breathing now? Particulate matter and diesel exhaust. You're in, in an urban area. I know there's a little water over here, but you know, there's traffic around here. So you're breathing this right now. So when you get this inflammation on this slide, uh, I want you to focus on um, the area down here. These guys putting out the interleukins and gamma interferon causing the, the opening in the blood-brain barrier right in here. So this is the neuroinflammation. Again, it's done with the cytokines. It's all cytokine uh, play in, in, the, um, in our body with inflammation and anything from the immune system, including inflammation. And so then you get the opening, the, the permeability of the blood-brain barrier, which is, I mean, it's there for a reason, right? To protect the brain. You know, when the, when the door's wide open, things come in that you don't want to come in there. So that's the mechanism. Now, how does it show up? Well, I already talked about uh, the basic signs and symptoms, so pain. Chronic pain, chronic headaches, frequent headaches. How often do... Do people come in complaining of pain and headaches? Like that's a fairly frequent thing. And how often are headaches associated with any uh, toxicant overload? Pretty common, right? Those of you who were here yesterday and I showed the different pictures of the different toxicants, headaches was on there a lot, right? Especially in the heavy metals. Cognitive decline. Mood disorders and then all the the problems of traumatic brain injury that go on. Could you put me down for a salmon thing there? Thank you. Now the diseases that are associated that are now clearly 
Neuroinflammation is a part of these diseases, which those of you who've been out of school for a while, maybe those of you who are still in school, don't even have this information. ADHD is known neuroinflammation. Alzheimer's, known neuroinflammation. It's not just the neurofibrillary tangles and beta amyloid plaque anymore. It's neuroinflammation is a hallmark, now known as a hallmark in Alzheimer's. ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease, a hallmark neuroinflammation. Autism, hallmark neuroinflammation. Bipolar disorder, hallmark neuroinflammation. Multiple sclerosis, and all the motoneuron diseases. Parkinsonism, known, hallmark, now, neuroinflammation. Seizures and strokes, the sequelae after strokes, known neuroinflammation. All those things. Now, Parkinson's has been clearly uh, an environmental issue, an environmentally induced issue for quite a while now. Alzheimer's is really turning out to be that that way as well. So these are the these are known. It's not just like yeah we find it as well. These are now known as hallmark presence of neuroinflammation in all these diseases. Not just oh yeah we kind of find it there also. So you know pain. What's the classic treatment for pain? Isn't anti-inflammatory is a classic pain treatment, right? But when it gets this chronic situation, how to deal with the chronic inflammation that's going on. And you know that you got people with chronic pain, they take an anti-inflammatory and by the time it's out of the bloodstream, their pain's back, right? It's a chronic inflammatory buildup. You know that happens in other parts of the body that have a tremendous, a lot more circulatory presence blood flow that's able to move things up because it's a systemic process of cytokines. We have to change the systemic cytokine picture. How do you do that? We're going to show you. And it's not just one way. It's a bunch of ways. You're going you're gonna to love it. You're just going to love it. So let's talk about cognition for a while, okay? So what caused a drop in cognition and, and, and executive function in the brain? The known toxicants, vehicular exhaust, the stuff we're breathing every day, phthalates, the plasticizers, organophosphate pesticides, heavy metals, and PCBs, clearly associated. Now, the trouble is, oh my goodness, guess what? The IQ's been going down. It's been going down. We are now, I think, 14 points IQ average lower than they were in Victorian England. 14 points. Now, IQ points are, you know, each point is significant. 14 points is like, oh my. I thought, but we've invented all this great stuff. Aren't we smarter now? No, 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 we're actually not. And the predictions here, here's the predictions for world IQ over time is, oh my goodness. Just, this is just since 1950. This is just the drop since 1950. This doesn't even show the data from Victorian England. So, IQ's going down. <laughs>